I've been trying to figure out how to introduce this video for like two minutes now. It's just been footage of me rolling in going, hey, what's up, guys? Time for that season finale review. But it's just, it's horrible. So I'm just going to go with this. Hello, welcome to my final review of Voltron, aka the season finale, season eight review. Fireworks. As you can tell by the change of scenery, I am not at my apartment. I am at my parents' house for the holidays. I wanted to film in front of my Christmas tree because I saw Ordinary Dreamer and that Emma girl do it. I was just like, I'll jump on the bandwagon. But uh, yeah, Voltron. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the thing. I have a tendency to sugarcoat things because I don't want to upset or offend anybody, but I don't think I can afford to do that for this review so i will be as honest and straightforward as i can and just state what i really think so i was not able to watch this season right as it premiered because i had a final that day but um i watched it as soon as i could with my brother watched the whole thing in one go um i rewatched some episodes just to get a feel and like be able to reevaluate and process everything and um i have words <laughs> but let me just say that um i liked this season better than season seven. I'll say that up front. Um, to the people who are very, very livid about this season and angry about it, um, you have the right to be so. There were a few bits that had me pulling out my hair going like, what? How? What? How does this work? Why is this a thing? But um, I don't think that we should ignore the good parts as well because there were some great parts sprinkled throughout this season I thoroughly enjoyed. Like my last video, I'm gonna put off the ship discussion and drama to the end because hey there's more to Voltron than just the ships you know some people tend to forget that oh puppy's here hello Ruru what did you think of Voltron season 8 <laughs> did you like it no okay bye hey Bee Bear <coughs> do you have any thoughts on season 8 that was cool that was cool anything you liked um fighting was cool the fighting was cool okay anything you didn't like I don't know I feel like they should explain some stuff sometimes. Like, I, you know like in anime when they like take entire episodes to break stuff down? Like, that would have kind of, kind of appreciated, you know? Yeah, okay. What was confusing for you? What was it when like, I don't know, whenever this magic stuff happened and then like somehow saves their lives like every time. Okay, yeah. All right, so starting off with things that I did like. First off, <laughs> then eat it, you boof. <laughs> the animation was absolutely Phenomenal. Oh my god. There were times where I just like would pause the screen and just look at the gorgeousness that was like the scenery, the backdrops, just the action shots too. Oh my god. Like this season went above and beyond for the animation. The aesthetics were top tier. Oh, it was just so gorgeous. I loved it. Like they they went all out for the animation. The colors, the positioning, everything, which just came together so wonderfully. And then the action scenes, yo, they had some of the best fights in this season. What'd you say? Oh my god, the mecha battles. Those were so cool to watch. Like, I, my mind was blown every time. Like, I was just, would be on the edge of my seat going like, oh my gosh, like, what's gonna happen? It's, oh, the fighting was fantastic. I, these had some of the best battles of the entire series, I think. I think my favorite fight was probably um, in season six with uh, Shiro versus Keith, the Black Paladins fight. That was great. Um, but the mecha battles in this season were so cool. I love the little bits sprinkled throughout the season where you got to see uh, like peeks into the more mundane sides of uh, the paladins and the fighters as well. Like I really liked the episode day 47. I'm pretty sure it's day 47. The, the vlogging episode with Kincaid, that was really cool. Like I loved found footage sort of stuff. So just seeing like the fights and like the uh, daily happenings taking place from like a camera's perspective, you know, like the whole part where Voltron is in battle and like the camera's like floating around. Maybe had the camera in their mouth, like running around. That was so cool and cute. The voice acting was as always great. The Paladins were of course fantastic. The only voice that I had some qualms with was Zethrid. Um, I don't know if her voice actress is new or maybe it was difficult for her, but it just sounded very like, she was talking of a script or like very like ah, da, 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 ah, ah, da, da. I, I don't know it, it bothered me a bit yeah, everything else was good the ending was so bittersweet to the lions you know going off into space to new horizons we don't know because 
you know, Voltron's not needed anymore. Voltron is done. The universe is safe. So the line. <laughs> ah! It really brings the show full circle, you know? Like Lance panning out on his face and then the lion physically up his. Ah! See, all the things that I wanted to say that I didn't like are kind of like burning in my head right now. And it's just like, well, shoot, I can't remember the other things I liked. All right, so I guess I can go into the things that I wasn't too happy about. Um, first off, my biggest gripe with Voltron as a show is that there is just so much story, so many characters, and just not enough real estate to put it in. Like, oh God, this show had so much potential. It, it has like everything going for it, you know? Ugh, it's like, I feel like a parent whose kid is like flunking school but I've seen them do really, really well in the past. So it's like, come on, Joey, I know you can do it. It has an intriguing world and awesome characters just win and get fleshed out. The first two seasons were so good. It was like a premise for something that could have been fantastic, but it just fell flat. Like the potential just, ah! You could have had it all, you know? But <laughs> there was just so much that was sold short and <laughs> it really miffs me because like, Oh! If only we were able to have more episodes and, you know, the seasons weren't cut because I'm gonna say initially I was like, okay, sure, the cut seasons and the smaller packages might be better, like more content like steadily trickled out and as long as it flows well, it'll be fine, but the flow wasn't there. Everything just felt so choppy. And apparently there's some tea on Twitter, the writers would change a lot. A lot of the decisions would be kind of like all over the place. It's just there wasn't any cohesion, so... That's why everything feels so all over the place. Like we get a little thing that's like, oh, we're gonna see this later on and then it disappears. Or we get this little thing where we're just like, okay, yeah, sure. But then it gets expanded to something that we didn't even really want, you know? There are so many unanswered questions, unresolved plot points, and it's like, okay, sure, it's open for us to, you know, flush out ourselves, but like it would have been nice to have something canon to work with. That's just the biggest root of all the problems that come from complaints about the writing and you know, underdeveloped characters and lost plot points and plot holes. It's just, there's no cohesion. There's no flow. The pacing is ridiculous. Like tone changes happen like that. Like I remember in the episode where, what was it, the carnival? Like it'd be like happy fun times like happening in one sector and all of a sudden it's like Alora with the dark energy entity having hallucinations. It's like, I'm getting whiplash. This entire series after the first two seasons just felt like it was trying to be like three or four different shows at once. It just, you got whiplash trying to cover everything so quickly and there wasn't enough explanation and fleshing out between the dots. This season in particular, like, I wanna know about the science, you know? But no, we just get like this unexplained magic bull crap. It's like, oh, well, Paige apparently can like see into Ocarion. She can see what happened before the planet died, but how? It just says like, oh, it's because of her connection with nature. Like, is that it? Is that all we get? And what even happened to the rest of the Yolkari people? They just, they're on a moon somewhere apparently, but we never see them again. Maybe this is gonna be fleshed out in the comics? I don't know. Speaking of a little plot point that would have been nice to be fleshed out, um, Lance's broadsword, it came out for like, what, five seconds during his fight with King Alphor? And <laughs> even then people were like, wait, he used his broadsword? Like, it, it was barely seen. And then, oh yeah, the fight with the old paladins. It's like, okay, their souls were trapped in her nervous mind. Speaking of, they would do things, it's like, we have to go into her nervous mind, or we have to do this, we have to do that. And I'm just like, okay, sure. <laughs> that whole astral plane, her nervous mind part was just so many levels of what the heck is happening. I, it's probably the point, you know, cause it's like, oh, you're in the mind of a psychopath. like. Zarkon said, but... <laughs> and they apparently were able to figure out her nervous plans like that. Oh, we know what her entire plan is just by the powers of deduction and science. And let's not forget the constant recycling of guys, we can do this. If we work together, we're a team. Our friendship knows no bounds. And then boom, Voltron is suddenly able to, you know, kick ass again. Ugh, even my body's rejecting <laughs> this season. And what was with the Balmeras? Like coming together, it's like, oh, the convergence. They come together in like dire times of need. And like they're siphoning the quintessence or whatever. And then like all of a sudden, Crowley is there. And like, when did Crowley get back on the Atlas? Like she suddenly was just there again with Crowley. 
Krolovon. <laughs> Krolovon's like their ship name, Kolovon. I don't want to compare shows if I can help it, but oh my god, I have been rewatching Clone Wars with my brother, and just the differences between Voltron and Clone Wars. Clone Wars is so fleshed out, it explains everything so well. Like the storyline, the characters, just everything fits. You see it develop and like go down. Voltron just feels like a kiddie pool compared to the ocean that's Clone Wars. Ugh, again, like the wasted potential. And with the ending and all, that was weird too. Like I tried, did Hanerva and Allura like go into, because Hagar destroyed all of the, the, the different realities, you know? But like it shows them walking off. Is it like, like the afterlife? Is it like an alternate reality alter life? Is it just a goodbye? Like. <sighs> The goodbye scene was so unnecessary, I feel like, too. I mean, I, it was more for the audience than anything else, I think, but and the fact that Coran didn't get to say goodbye to Alora, just like, okay, you'll let Lance, her boyfriend of like, how long say goodbye to her versus Coran, who's known her since birth? Okay, sure. I guess it's part of the punch though, because it does make her death more sad in that regard, but like the whole palance, it just seems unfair. That is death though. Yeah. There's so many parts of this video which is me making like ridiculous faces while I try to think of what to say. <laughs> yeah, all the problems that Voltron has can pretty much be boiled down to too much story, too many characters, too much going on with too little time. That's the beauty of fan content though. I mean, fans have been able to flesh out all of the holes left that the show couldn't get to. So <laughs> that, that's one good part of the fandom. I feel like Voltron tries to be meta for the meme like oh no we're aware of like all of this stuff but it just comes off so awkward like they're trying to like be cheeky about it but it just comes off very awkwardly <laughs> another thing that i noticed is that when they do provide exposition and like details for stuff it's kind of just like, look, look, here it is. Can you see? We're giving you the context for everything. I feel like a lot of my explanations for this video are like so haphazard, but it's just, ugh. It's like Vulture relies on all these recycled save the day moments or like just, oh, and all of a sudden, Balmeras were here. All, all of a sudden, like so-and-so happens and there we go, they're all safe. It just feels like they're slapping a patch on a gaping hole that could have been fixed if, you know, people came together and agreed on a solution for a particular problem or like story point. With the characters, Hunk, I think had some great moments throughout this season. Like season seven and eight were very kind to Hunk. With Hunk's food brings people together thing this season, with him, you know, making bread, not war sort of mindset. I actually really enjoyed that. I think it was very in line with who he is as a character. He's very, he's very much a peaceful guy, you know? Like, and he loves cooking, which I don't think is a problem because it's been shown that he, there's more to him than just the cooking at this point. It's something that he loves and it's been explored in his backstory as well of why he loves it. Him and Keith's interactions in the carnival episode, I love that. Like, I live for the Heath moments. They're so wholesome. <laughs> Keith is the character of all the paladins that has had the most fleshed out arc, backstory, and resolution. We saw him grow up and develop from his start as like the angsty lone wolf who wouldn't work together with anybody, all the way over to the leader of Voltron who successfully, you know, saved the universe in all its realities. Shiro's had some decent development as well. Um, we weren't able to get a ton on his backstory. We got a little peek into his life in the garrison, being Keith's mentor and everything. But um, yeah, there still could be more with Shiro. And Allura having to sacrifice herself to save all realities as we know it. How did she do that again? Something Lotor taught her with reversing the quintessence somehow, okay. I, I really didn't like how she kind of turned to the dark side a bit in this season, you know, like with taking in the dark entity. It's like, oh, but we have to, to find Hanerva, which I guess it's like, oh, like even the most good of characters can, you know, do some bad things to protect the people they love and get to where they need to go. But it's just like, we saw the same thing pretty much happen in season one, you know, or was it season two? I don't remember at this point. It's with her father and the whole hologram thing. Again, with kind of the recycled bits that are reused over and over again. Like we've seen this happen, something similar to it at least with Allura. So I don't know. Ugh. And we barely know anything about the entities as well. Minus the fact that, you know, they corrupted Zarkon and Hagar, but it was like 
that. Whereas Allura could somehow contain it in herself for a while, as well as the other Altaeans. I don't know, how does that work? Just all this quintessence stuff and like the dark entity energies with like Lotor as well. It's just, everything is so convoluted. Lotor's a character is just so tragic. He's made a ton of mistakes, but in the end, he really was just trying for a better world. A world that was different from the dictatorship and the tyranny of his father. Like I never said, he deserved better. <laughs> we really didn't need one entire episode for Hagar, like hashing out things that we've kind of already seen. Just, they could have been sprinkled and like, kind of like stitched together real quick, but oh, like this show stretches out things that we really don't care about or need, but then it just condenses things and like skips over stuff that like, wait, no, how does this work? No, I need to know more. I generally felt trolled a few times. So yeah, Laura going to the dark side again and getting twisted a bit. Uh, I, I wasn't a huge fan. And plus the whole confusion of like, after the dark entity goes into her, she's like, we have to go into her nervous mind. It's like, how did you draw that conclusion? Never mind the fact that conveniently the old paladins are trapped inside her nervous mind somehow and you set them free and then we don't really know what happens to them after that. And Allura torturing Zarkon, who was clueless about his doings, that was also uncalled for. I get that she was pissed, they were all pissed and no one really stopped her, but like, really? The dude was clueless. He was possessed by an evil dark entity. Like, yeah, his drive for quintessence and power drove him to that point, but did he really need to relive all of the horrible things that he did when he wasn't even conscious of it? No. <laughs> it's like, it reminded me of Hawkeye in the first Avengers when Loki was, you know, hacked into his brain. He was just like, how many people did I kill? And Wakoda was like, no, don't think about it like it wasn't you. And then Lance, oh Lance. The Lance fangirls in the fandom have always annoyed me. They have the tendency to pin Lance as this relatable sad boy all the time while ignoring all of his other qualities. But I have to say with this season and the last season as well, Lance, we, we don't get much of Lance anymore. It's just this entire character is surrounding Allura and his love for Allura, which I guess, okay, so in the beginning he was like, oh, lover boy Lance, playboy. And then all of a sudden like he suddenly committed to this one girl, you know, but uh, it's just, it was sad because you know, like many other things in Voltron, he had potential and just, it was never flushed out. Although I disagree with the Lance fan girls on a lot of things, I will say that Lance was robbed. <laughs> there were some cute moments this season. Um, mind you, they all had to deal with Alora. Like I liked how he, was trying to win her the prize at the carnival. It's just sad because, you know, I would have liked to see more of Lance outside of his relationship. Um, but I mean, because of the constraints that the show has with time and then Lance with the Altan markings, was that just there for aesthetic because people were like, I love Altan Lance so much that the creators were like, okay, sure, we'll throw him a bone and not explain it at all. It's just, yeah. Oh, puppy. Hi. Don't mess up my microphone. Oh, I, okay, okay, hi. Do you think the characters deserved more? If so, which ones? Oh my gosh, what is this in your throat? I love the whole family this season too. I wish we got more Matt and like a little bit more on his girlfriend too, because that would have been cute, but you only have so much time, you know? So that has to take a bit of a backseat. But um, I loved their family photo in the carnival episode. I loved Colleen grounding Katie for running off. Vlogging episode that showed Colleen with the plants. And then we have Sam and Slav working together in the end room. Oh my gosh, and Slav. I love that Slob is back! I, oh, Slob is probably like one of my favorite minor characters. <laughs> I'll see what I can do. Yeah, Shiro, <laughs> you're probably hearing him breathe right now. I wish we could have gotten a little bit more of Shiro outside of, you know, him being the captain of the Atlas. I guess we saw that bit in the carnival, I don't know. Shiro just kind of feels almost like an afterthought now. Mm, it's hard for me to formulate thoughts with these little cutie in front of me. I say little cutie, he weighs almost as much as I do. No, okay, no, oh, don't look. Speaking of the Atlas, the fusion with Voltron, just the fusion of the robots in general, I, <laughs> I thought it was really unnecessary and like, why? It was cool, I guess, kind of like a Steven Universe thing, but I mean, if they fuse, we at least should have seen them do a fusion dance, you know? I just thought it was a little silly. What do you think, Rue? Do you like the fusion of the robots? The MFE pilots, like they were such a big part of last season and now it's just like, 
okay, they're in the vlog, they help out the Atlas sometimes. Just we really didn't get much of them, which I was afraid of before I even watched this season because I knew like, oh shoot, they're probably gonna either take a backseat or take up too much real estate for the last season. And it was the former. Ramel, she played a decent part in the season. Like she helped with the Altaians and everything, but like it was mostly Lura and Koran that, you know, ended up talking to the Altaians and everything. Like Ramel tried, but it's just, I really, she seems like a waste of character a little bit at this time. Yeah, I wish Ramel could have been more than just like the peppy, quirky side character that had a kind of major part two seasons ago, but is now kind of like thrown into the background and only there to accompany the main characters in their little side quests. <laughs> Again, it's just like you're juggling so many different characters that you have to drop the ball for some of them. The biggest loss of all this season was Matt's ponytail. Like you gave the man gorgeous hair and then all of a sudden you just snip it off a year later. It's like, what's the point? Okay, I guess we could get into shipping now. Um, so, hmm. All the ships kind of came together after this season and that they all were kind of over. Alurance did become canon, but it didn't last for very long. My feelings about Alurance were that it could have been such a good ship if only it were developed better. Like if they had moments sprinkled throughout the entire series of like, you know, like sending each other looks or like having more bonding moments with each other, it could have been more like, okay, yeah, no, Alurance is gonna become a thing. And some of the, you know, tensions with the other ships could have been lessened because a lot of ships were like, oh yeah, no, we're totally gonna be canon. And that's where a lot of the fighting and the fandom came from. So if Alurance was made clear that, hey, this is what we're gunning for from the start, then we could have avoided a lot of unnecessary drama with the fans. However, because of, you know, the constant writing changes, yeah, uh, Voltron both on screen and off screen is high key a mess. I don't chip Alurance, but they did have some cute moments. I had to like go aw and coo a few times, like, for instance, when Allura and Lance were curled up next to each other. Their date was really cute, although it got really intense really quick. I, I don't like how Lance said I love you on the first date. Like, if they wanted to keep the goodbye scene, like they could have had Lance say, I love you for the first time there. It's a little bit more in character, plus it would have made the punch of Allure's death that much like more painful. The plant shippers I know were pretty hopeful as well. Uh, it seemed like, honestly, it could have happened, especially with the like little moments they had in the last season. For me personally, um, plants, I see it as more as like a sibling relationship, but I can see how it's cute. I think that Emma Girl mentioned this in her review one time, but plants, you know, Pitch deserves to be someone's first choice, you know? And um, obviously she wasn't, because Lance had hard eyes for Alora, so that wouldn't come to fruition. And yeah, the whole thing with Lotor too, his mother was just controlling his ship with his corpse just bouncing around inside. That was a little, a little scary. People always say that Lance was a rebound because Allura had a thing with Lotor. The thing is like, okay, Lotor and Allura technically were never really together. I mean, they had crushes on each other. They liked each other. They shared a kiss, but that was before, you know, they found out that Lotor was <laughs> draining Altaians of their quintessence. So like there really was no relationship to rebound from. Although, okay. <laughs> Allura should have shown signs that she was kind of interested in Lance before the whole Lotor debacle, because it does almost feel like a rebound, even though it technically isn't. Just like how the whole Adam fiasco felt like queer baiting, even though it technically wasn't because I mean, they were in a relationship at a point. Poppy, you are ruining my presence. It was an emotional rebound maybe. I I don't know how to put it. Zether was apparently able to commandeer a Galra ship, get a crew together and then go after Voltron. Then meanwhile, we don't even know what happened with Ezor. All of a sudden she's just like, oh no, Ezor's like here, she's alive and she has an eye patch now. And Zethra's like, yay, no, happy lesbians. It's just like, okay, some explanation would be nice for how Ezor and Zethra survived and how Ezor just like was on the ship. Kaksha ended up not coming to be, which I'm low key relieved for because it was just like, what? But uh, her and Veronica though, that that was cool. I really like the relationship, whether it's a friendship or a romantic relationship, like I really like their dynamic, it's good. Is it bad for me to say that at this point, I feel like I know Veronica more than I know Lance? Honey, we, it's implied that it's canon, right? Cause I mean, we see her at the end helping Hunk with his culinary empire 
and he was there at his bedside after uh, last season. So I think we can infer that they're they're kind of a thing. Oh. With Sheath, I know a lot of them are kind of upset because it seemed like Keith was being cucked for the entire series, you know, like, oh, cucked for six seasons and then he marries some rando. I feel bad for y'all because really, Keith and Shiro's relationship is the most fleshed out relationship of the series. And then there's Clance. Clance, uh, Clance I knew was not going to happen um, for a while now. So the fact that some of y'all were optimistic to the end, like kudos to you guys, you have more strength than I do. But I don't know, I mean, with the ending that Viltrun has, really any of the ships could potentially be canon in the end. I mean, minus a Lawrence. Because I mean, who knows? Like, Lance is doing his thing on his farm and he could be visiting the galaxy garrison. At the end, he gets closer to Pidge and then becomes a professor there and helps her out with her family. That could be a thing. With Clance, Keith could visit Lance after he's done with Blade Memora stuff, and then they just have a nice relaxing time on Earth together. People who were like, yeah, no, Laura's out of the picture. Now they could become a thing, and Lance could realize that he's gay or bi or whatever. It's like, really? Yet, yeah, no. Ugh. Like, I had some issues with Laura being mainly that she seemed like a Mary Sue a lot of the time because of how she got the characters out of certain situations. It was just like, oh no, it's hidden magic, there we go. Everything's solved, but like that wasn't her fault, you know? I mean, that was that was the writing. I don't know, like I love Clance. I'm a Clancer at heart. It's a really cute ship in my opinion. Um, and I can, in my head, see it happening in the future now that they're all grown up and like, you know, they're doing their own things. Um, so yeah, I, I like the open-endedness of that, but I don't think it's okay that you know, people are saying, yeah, like Laura's out of the picture and now clans could be a thing. Like that, don't do that. As a clancer, I like to think that for the canon ending at least, Lance spends a few years, you know, coming to terms with himself on Earth, spending time with his family, the time that was lost in space. Keith comes back, they spend some time with each other and then Keith is like, why don't you come with me? And you know, sees the stars again and they jet off together helping the Blade of Amora with their humanitarian efforts and somewhere along the way, romance blossoms and Lance is able to move on and still keep Allura in his heart and Keith is able to, you know, find some more family in Lance. There you go. Who knows, maybe they could be each other's dates for Shiro's wedding to Rando Curtis. <laughs> is the leak here still happening? That whole side project, that like Fanon thing. I don't know, I haven't been paying attention. I look into it. In regards to some other controversies, um, people were saying that Lance becoming a farmer at the end was not true to his character. And part of me does agree. Like, okay, I, I like that he's having a simple life now and he's able to, you know, relax, spend time with his family on earth, like, you know, he kind of wanted, but you know, wasn't, his dream to be like a pilot, like a fighter pilot, I guess war changed him maybe. And now he's just wanting a simple life for now. And then maybe he can get back into things after he finishes mourning a bit. But you know, at the same time, it's like, I don't want Lance to be mourning on a farm for the rest of his life over a girl he only was able to date for a little while. I mean, granted he did know her for a while, but it's just, it's there's more to him. Like he's a happy boy, he's sharpshooter Lance. I think he, there's more to Lance than just spending the rest of his life mourning on a farm. Some are saying that it is a racial stereotype for Lance as a Latino to be working on a farm. If you're upset by this, I'm sorry. I'm sure it was unintentional on the writer's parts. Clumsy, but unintentional. <laughs> I don't know if I have any um, authority or grounds to talk about that, but um, yeah, and the fact that they also killed Allura, who is a woman of color, is also turning heads. It's tricky, it's hard, and I wanna say that it was unintentional on the staff's part, but I mean, the fact that, you know, Lauren said that like, Laura's death in the original series traumatized her as a child, and the fact that, you know, Laura died here, Huh. I I really don't like how they married Cheryl off to a rando at the end. Some may say like, oh, well, he's not that random. He was present during the arm wrestling match. Like, 
We didn't even know his name until, you know, the credits. This just feels like Voltron, you know, trying to cover up the mess that was Adashi last season and go for woke points and be like, no, wait, see, we're, we are having LGBT content. It's not just the space lesbians. Shiro has a wedding too. And the fact that that was the very last thing we saw of Voltron, like I, <laughs> Do you mind? Like this is a show about mechas and robots and science and the paladins. And the last thing I see is Shiro marrying some random guy. Okay. <laughs> Granted it was in the credits, so I can't batter them too harshly for that. I would have much preferred to see Shiro like having a date with this guy or something before, you know, jump into a full blown wedding. But also the fact that, you know, happiness doesn't just come from romantic relationships. It could have shown Shiro being an instructor again at the Galaxy Garrison. It's just in hindsight, the whole Adam thing was so unnecessary. It just added so much drama that really didn't need to be there. So overall, my thoughts on this season and in Voltron in general, this season, I was very much mixed. Like last season, I definitely was a little more on content, whereas this season I'm like, okay, I can get a little bit more on board with it. I had some great episodes and a few moments that I really, really liked, um, but it's just so many of the problems just inevitably just came down to the writing choices taken by the staff and the fact that there's just too much to cover for the time allotted. In another life, Voltron could have potentially gone toe to toe with like the greats, Avatar, Les Airbender, Clone Wars, but it just, it was too shallow. I love the characters. I wish we could have seen more of them and done more with them. The premise, the storyline was there. It's just the execution of it was sloppy at best. In the end, bad marketing, skipping around on details and just teasing the fans a little bit too much led to a lot of the fandom drama, which you can't even fully blame on the fandom. Do I regret my time with Voltron? No, I enjoyed a good part of the show. Um, I'm just, Miffed at all the potential lost. My first Voltron video entering the Voltron fandom like was the catalyst that got my channel to where it is today. And I'm very grateful to Voltron for that. It's given me the chance to meet amazing people, bond with my friends and meet other creators like Ordinary Dreamer and that Emma girl. I've gotten the chance to be on the Let's Voltron podcast. Voltron Amino sponsored me multiple times. Voltron has given me so many opportunities that I will never take for granted. So I have to thank Voltron for that. But I have to say that as a consumer of Voltron as a piece of media, I feel like, you know, boarding the hype train, riding it out, I almost feel like I've been left at the station. It was a great hyperfixation while it lasted, um, but I've moved on at this point. In fact, I'm making a whole documentary about my latest hyperfixation. In the end, it's just, my feelings are a mixed bucket. Like, there's so much I like, so much I don't like, so much I wish that could have happened so much that I am angry did happen. Yeah, <laughs> this is the last time that I'm gonna talk about Voltron this in depth. I might have a whole text post somewhere where I'll just dive into my feelings more thoroughly because I'm definitely much better at articulating my thoughts in writing than I am talking because I've been all over the place this video. To the people that have been with me since the very beginning, Thank you for sticking around for my Voltron content. My very last update on the Voltron fandom video will be coming out soon. To those of you still sticking around in the fandom, be kind to each other, please. It's all we can really do in this world, in this life. If you have any headcanons on what you think happens after the finale, if you have anything that you'd like to rewrite yourself, any like your version of how Voltron should have been or should have ended. With me, I was happy with everything until Clone Shiro appeared in the middle of season three. I I would have had more time of them actually searching for Shiro to make the finding him that much more bittersweet. Cut down on the time that clone Shiro has with the team to make it like more obvious from the start that something's not right. And then for heaven's sake, have Lance use his broadsword against him, please. If I wanted to stick with the learns again, I would have just sprinkled more hints of it throughout the series to make sure that it's obvious that it's going to be a thing. If I wanted Clance to be a thing, I mean, there were a lot of moments that were just like, oh, already? Like having Keith leave for that long of a time just really hurt the series for a while. Like it would have been fine if we had like brief flashes of what he was doing in conjunction with the rest of the team, but that didn't happen. And from the start, it seemed like Lance was gonna be the primary protagonist and all of a sudden it jumped ship to Keith. And then all of a sudden it's all over the place when Keith is gone. So they really should have had it out like, okay, we're either gonna give each of the Paladins the exact same amount of time 
or we're gonna focus on maybe two of them equally, not bouncing around like this. On Amino, Purple Walmart Loki says, how I feel about season eight, Lotor deserves so much better. Baby Lotor is the most adorable thing. I agree. Oh, that was one great part of season eight. Just seeing baby Lotor. Lance became a freaking farmer. Alerance just feels wrong. Keith gets a ponytail. That, that's a great point. What's up with Lance's all tan marks? Keith and Cheryl barely interacted. Yeah, yeah. Like I can see Lance becoming a farmer for a little bit at least just to heal but spending the rest of his life on a farm, improbable. And yeah, um, that's, that's my spiel. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this very messy review of Voltron in the final season. I mean, granted, it's not as messy as the actual series itself, right? Oh I don't know if I'm going to make much more Voltron content. If you have any suggestions that you'd like me to cover, for Voltron, maybe if something big comes up for Voltron, I can do something about it. I will see you in my next video. Bye. Puppy. Puppy. Say goodbye. Puppy. Say bye, puppy. <laughs> oh, he looks so angry. <laughs> oh, <pfft. laughs>